Hi guys, <coughs> Tiny Tango One coming at you here with a um, little video I thought I'd do. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is for um, this is for a friend over the other side of the pond, um, Newfoundland, I think it is. Curtis. Um, he wanted another little pouch, a possible pouch, you know, anything like that. So. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to do with this little pouch, but he wanted black and brown. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to use this dark Havana. I'm going to use that as his main <coughs> uh, hide leather on the outside. And I'm going to use a soft black grade leather for the front and the gusset. So... What I've done here is I've, I've measured this one, I think I've, I've got it out at 7 inches or something like that. It's, um, it's sev 7 inches is where I'm going to be, um, from here to here, is where that's going to be actually the pouch. And then I've just circled off, I'll bring it up close, you might be able to see that, I, I've circled off um, where I'm going to make the, the top flap. It's five inches wide, so half of that is two and a half inches. So find the middle and away we go. So without further ado, I'm just going to cut around this. I just thought I'd try and have a go at doing a whole video. And um, if it's going on to too long where you're thinking, oh, it's, it's worse than watching paint dry. Um, well, we'll say I can just add it on now. I've got to... I've got this program where I can just yeah. add on so it's not too bad. Let's so what I'm going to do now. is I'm going to so I'm going to cut this piece out here. here. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep making sure I'm in camera shot. Mark off these corners um, and then I'll just to round them, them off. And I'll just do it with a little a paint pot, you know, just to give me that circle bit. So without further ado, I'm going to do that. One, let me do that one. <clears throat> oh, I've got a bit of a not a strap throat, but I've got something that's uh, actually annoying my throat. So, a little tickly bit there that keeps making me cough. So, there we go, that's got that little bit there. Let's uh, just cut these two. Sorry if I ramble on. I, I try to talk, um, talk you through it best I can. This is basically um, a standing off, really. I mean, as uh, I'm not insulting your intelligence, I'm sure you can all see that. <laughs> but uh, surprising, there's a lot of people out there that actually want to, um, uh, according to the feedback I've got. That, that like it when I actually um what's the word narrate it or something talk through it you know explaining to people what I'm doing because they're not always sure but they just feel assured when when I talk them through it that um, they've got it they understand it right so um, yeah I've right, got that straight my little rubbish bin that's at the bottom there. Right, the next job I'd like to be doing is I'm just going to put a groove stitch around here. <clears throat> now this groove stitch going around will just be for cosmetic reasons. It just takes away that little bit of plainness so I'll get my groove stitch. I usually use it on the same uh, distance every time like you know so without further ado let's get that little whisper off there see we'll go around there and do that and what I should do is uh, I should dye this when I uh, when I come to that stage of dyeing the edge for um 
polishing. I just rub that round there and um, just rub it in the just rub the dye in the groove, wipe it off quick. Um, that dyes it down, but this I um, I'm not too keen on this type of butt leather because um, I think what happened he, he gave me the wrong hide when I went down there and um, I said to him I want just wanted a, a full hide and um, what this is me leather supply I'm talking about and what he done is he gave me this one now this one it's a bit different too. Well, I'm just trying to get a bit of it for you. No, that's not it. But, uh, I've got a bit somewhere, but basically what it is is the edge of the edge of the uh, leather. It's dyed right through. This one, obviously, as you can see, it isn't. So, but I prefer the one which is dyed right through and when I get a full hide that goes right from the top of the neck of the cow right down to its rump to its bottom so um, and for some reason they're, they're, I prefer those um, they're ideal for make they're a little bit thicker they're ideal for making belts that you wear etc but you get these this normal um, natural leather times you dye it down you know you've got two mil there but times you dye it down it's really paper thin I'm thinking well that's no good for a belt the only other one I can use is um, what they call ballet leather it's what they use for ballet shoes they put it in the toe of the shoes um, and that's real thick stuff but my god it makes a nice belt um, but as I say I'm retired now I can only get it as and when I um, according to orders etc I don't hold stock in great quantities I'm starting to rub it on and I don't want to do that there we go so that's that one done now I'm just going to edge this off but I'm only going to edge it on the outside um, not on the inside and you'll see why later on I will do edge it from here round there because that is going to be seen this won't be so I'll just do this bit first where are we there we go that's going to go up to there the gussets are going to go up to what seven inches something like that let's have a look see where we're at something like that yeah yeah, so it looks something like that. Right, so I'm going to take this off from there, that 7 inch mark that I've done. You see why you have to do all this? Because um, once you start edging it, die edging it, uh, you don't want to be trimming this off. And you've trimmed off your dye, <laughs> you got to dye, dye it again. So um, I tend to do it all in one. So we we'll go down here. We we'll start on this one here. Uh, this is a number two edger, concaved. It is. I'll show you it. So you should be able to see it. Um, there you can see that in concaved I have got one here that is uh, I'll, I'm going to bring it in close so you can see that is just a flat one oh, let's get my hand behind it so you can see hopefully let's see if you get that right that is a flat one that's for things like doing when you do a um, elongated hole um, using one of these um, 
and what you do is you you go around the edge of the hole, go around the edge of the hole, but you use it at a, basically at a right angle rather than flat ways. You use it that way, and um, that just gives it a leader for when the the pin goes through the the leather work. Carry on here. Uh, I have to be careful that I just don't go off on one, you know, I'm ranting about something completely different, which I tend to do. I think you all realise that. There we go. So, I'll get this round here. I sometimes often wonder whether I just like talking to myself, because I feel like that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, just come back from, I've done two weekends in a row fishing. All the weather turns. Just got myself a nice 10 pound carp. It's the only fish of the day, and I've got that just on the point of packing up. Been here all day, not had nothing. So that's got that done. Put that up. Going on for uh, Saturday as well. It's going to be nice Saturday, so we'll do a bit of fishing Saturday. Um, now, <coughs> excuse me. Bit of grade leather, but before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the belt buckle, uh, belt um, loop. Now I could make a loop on here, a dangler for a dangler, but I'm not. I'm going to use the conventional belt loop, but this is an extra wide one which I'm not going to be using. I'm going to be using a two inch wide which is the normal so which way should I go out of that it doesn't matter really put that there for now I've got a nice square edge there and a square edge there so I can use my two inches that way get me stick of inches right so we're going to go two inches here and mark it two inches down this side. I don't know if I'm going to get any more bushcrafting in this camping this uh, this side of uh, Christmas. It's getting a little bit too um, too cold now, really. I mark that. I don't know why I marked it. I might just might just as well have cut it with my blade, anyway. Has it done then, doesn't it? <clears throat> right, put that over there for now. That's uh, an off cut. And what did I do the length? Three inches, I believe. Yes, it was three inches. Which I'm going to get in there. I use a little set square for that. Comes in handy. I hope you can still see what I'm doing. Yes, three inches. Go three inches, cut it again. You've got to be careful of these roller blades. You have got to slide that forward, it protects it then. Don't leave it open like that. Because if you happen to touch your hand with it, anything like it, it's surprising how deep it cuts, even with a little tiny tap. <clears throat> so be warned on that, they are very, very sharp. You can shave with them, that's how sharp they are. And they won't drag on you. Right, now I've shaped that. So I'll give you all these little hints and tips and things. <laughs> right, now what are we going to do here? Right, what I want to do is I want to... I've got to do a bit of fancy work here, and I? So I think I'm going to do that one. Yeah, not quite right, but I'm going to do that one. Because I've already got the shape here, so it's easier just to copy that shape. Rather than... Where are we? Yeah, that one goes in there, that can go in there. So I'll copy that. And do the same over there. On that side, it's only the shape I'm copying because I know that these these pieces here, 
they're not um, they're not even oh that did move damn it not to worry I don't know if you can see that there they come forward a bit to do that yeah Right, let's cut that out first then. See, this is something else that... I'll get the light on the... Something else I'm going to need to do when, um, when it comes to uh, staining. So... And I am putting quite a bit of pressure on this blade, by the way. But what you have to remember when you're doing this, is if you're going to turn the blade, you know, when you're following around the line, lift it, and it, because if you don't, the tip of the blade goes in there, and as soon as you turn that blade, you snap the tip off. And then you defeated the object, because it's mainly, it's the tip that does all the cutting. Right, that's got that done. And it doesn't look very even to me, but there you go. So, but you can get a two inch belt in there. That's that's what my, that's the idea of it, is getting a, a two inch belt in there. Yeah, because you're stitching. Wrong way, let's go this way. There's your two inches. Uh, and you're going to be able to stitch down there and you stitch down there because it's three inches overall. Right. Now, some people find this boring, but as I said, a lot of people like it if I just um, carry on doing what I'm doing. Um, as they like to see it. Uh, as I do it, which is fair enough. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to put the blade down there and push it. That's how quick it cuts through that way. Um, just to make sure I've got the right same distance. That one there, that one there, and that one there. That one as well. I'll turn it round and do that. This is so I know I've got it up against the edge of the uh, leather. That's that's all that is. I've done it that way is so that um, I know I've got they're all they're all even corners by using just one corner of this. So I put that away. That's just a template I use, but um, the other template I had, which was the correct size, which is this one, um, <laughs> I ended up using for a job which was rather urgent. So rather than cutting one out, I just used it, which was silly now. Right, I'm still going to do this little cosmetic line round here like I do. Where am I? Am I in shot? Yeah. And um I don't know, it's just my little my little finishing touch thing I think. Or I personally just think it just finishes it off a little bit rather than it being just plain. So I have a walked out of it now. Well, and it just being plain, it's nice just to see a little bit of there. I mean, I also put a stamp in it to... <coughs> I try to put a stamp in to, according to the country that it's going to. And in this case, for Curtis, 
which is Canada. I want to put the Union Jack on it. <laughs> now I think I've now got a stamp for trim that off. I think I've got a Canadian maple leaf somewhere. Right now, um, all this I'm going to edge off. But later on, while I'm dyeing it and um, polishing the edge, I will I will switch off and I'll bring you back when it's um, when it's all done. Um, because it, it's uh, it can be a little long because you see that's a little bit different isn't it it just looks a little different and then what we do is uh, I, I do edge that bit in there and the reason I do it that side is because that's that's the underside and that's that's the underside and it's going to go on there uh, so what it does is it um, was rounding this edge and this edge um, when you come to push your belt in it's a lot easier so without further ado let's put that up there see I've got that whisper on there and I can't get rid of that and we'll do there you go that damn well annoy me that is right that's that Oh, Bob, your uncle Fanny's your aunt, as they say. Now, I've got an anvil here. This might, vib might vib vibrate the camera a little bit, so bear with me. Uh, I've got to come bring that out a bit, because the reason being is I'll put this anvil over the a supporting leg of the bench which is solid but you wouldn't think so and I like to make sure where are we bear with me I'm just trying to find this stamp here it is no it ain't that ain't it oh where are you where are you gone no 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 oh there it is there it is sorry about that Right, one maple leaf, and it's, it's it's very simple, easy to stamp this the wrong way. So that's the way it's going to be going on the back, and this is the way. You've got a smaller pin that goes in here. Show you it. Show you it. So you know. This is the smaller pin that goes in here. You can stamp it that way, it all depends really. Um, but these supporting bits here, let's bring it up a bit closer, these little supporting bits, that one there, you can see them there, um, they just reinforce it. And you've got little numbers or something on the bottom that tells you it's the bottom. And this, this is the other one. Those go in between those supports. Which in turn, theoretically, that is, even distributes the uh, pressure that the hammer is going to have on the... Um, Tool. So I hold it very still to the point where I let, I let it go because as soon as you grab hold of it, it moves. So I tend to just give it one whack like that, which woke it up. Put it back and you can feel it goes into the groove now, the little groove that I've made. So 
I can put that on there knowing that it's going to hit it in the same place. And what I do to make sure that it's got even you end up with that. Okay. So you can feel that, that go in that groove there like that. Look, watch it slide. There you go, it's caught that now. And by hitting it, I, I hit it this side with a hammer. So basically I'm hitting at that angle on the top of this. Then I hit that angle. Then this angle. And then this angle. <clears throat> that's my preference anyway. That's that's so I know I'll get that print on there properly. <coughs> right, let's put this back. There's some bits of tool in there. Like the um the deer. Not a moose, Curtis, not a moose, a deer, a deer head. And ju just, just for the record, where are we? Or a stag. That's a stag's head. So is that one. Okay. So I'm not going to put your stag's head on here. <laughs> Right, now, that's that done. Started rabbiting on again, didn't I? Now I've got to work this one out to uh, where I'm going to have that. So that's going to be, I think what I said was 7 inches, wasn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to do a gusset now, out of grade leather. Um, and it's going to be 7 inches. Um, no, it's not. Well, it's going to be seven inches either side. Now, I could put a two and a half inch gusset, or a two, inch, or one and a half, which might be enough rather than a two. Yeah, I'm going to go one and a half gusset on that. So um, let's just uh, dig out a bit of black grade now. I've got some in here somewhere. Here we go, what we've got here. Oh, there's a black grey deer, look. Oh, see, that's, that, oh, that's going to be big enough to do the whole bloody lot, I think. Oh, look, nice bit. Yeah, let's put the blade out of the way. Close it up so I don't cut this in. Now, I could get, excuse me, So the front of the pocket, gusset, <coughs> is going to be five inches, there, and total length is going to be seven. So I'm going to take a nice bit of pattern, a nice pattern piece which is there, And I can go right up to here somewhere, five inches, square. But I do like to make sure I've got a nice straight edge before I start. On the wrong side, which I believe this was cut straight. Yes, yeah, so I can use that. to make sure still got me there yeah five inches where are we going there I go just about to do that so I'll put that in there and square that one off there you go we'll cut that piece off now I'm gonna go seven inches It. 
that. Let me just sink here for a moment. Not happy with that straight edge. Sorry, there we go. It just to me, look, it seems to be curving. I don't know if you can see that. It's curving, isn't it? I mean, you can pull it into shape, but I don't want to do that. I, I want it to be the shape that I want to use. So I can. I'm going to take a little edge off all the way. And I tend to push the blade in towards the ruler. I tend to push it that way towards the ruler because if you don't, you go straight, you end up drifting away. And the reason you drift away is because as your arm gets longer, you naturally start doing that. So <clears throat> I can back the camera off a bit if you want, but um, it just makes it harder to see, I think, you know, um, properly what what's going on. Now I've done that. <clears throat> We've got seven inches that way, haven't I? See, I could go seven inches that way and then five inches the other way. But um, this gusset, how long has this gusset got to be? All right, well, let's work it out. It's not rocket science. We've got seven inches there, seven inches here, and five inches there. 19 inches, yeah. 1, 7, 7, 2, 7, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 inches, isn't it? I oh, was just testing you, just testing you. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 inches. Right. Now I could go along there, 19 inches, and it's done with, isn't it? Why don't I do that? Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to go 19 inches with what did I say an inch and a half gusset yeah okay so we we'll put inch and a half on there make sure it's the same in the middle and up here look at this see, see I do it all by sight I'm so so damn good and I yeah inch and a half inch and a half but I'm now going to be a little bit different <coughs> because my machine takes up that much so I'm going to make it 5 8 inch and 5 8 now that do not seem a lot you say I hear you say But it's enough, I can get my machine in there, so I'm not too too bothered. I can get my foot, the machine foot in there. And also the other thing is to remember when cutting a bit of frayed leather like this, you hold the ruler like that, and as you start cutting, let me just try and emphasize it by pushing that ruler over the leather work but it's level here it's right level with the leather here where am I? yeah and if you're just holding in the middle there what tends to happen is you're wheeling along like that and as you wheel along if you're not careful watch this watch this ruler here it starts to do that see it look that's what it does so you can't go hold it there like that and go one fell swoop because by doing it in a bit here and then just lift your hands go down again carry on again lift your hands go down and it stops it getting that banana because <clears throat> that's what it will do right not a lot of people know that as it happens <laughs> 
right that's that gusset right now what we want is the front piece don't we so I'm gonna are we still it yeah we're still going here um, I've got this camera plugged into the charger so it shouldn't cut out um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this this uh, 7 and 5 so I know that's a straight edge there and I know excuse me and I know this one is so all I've really got to do is come along here with this and like so 7 inches but I haven't got 5 inches there now because I've cut off from my gusset so I've got to come into 5 inches so I will do that without further ado by doing this first there you go I know I've got more than 5 inches there haven't I that's it <clears throat> Now for me, luckily, I'm ambidextrous, so I can do it left-handed as well. So, I ain't got to keep turning the job right round to, because I'm right-handed. Although, I'm right-handed at doing that, I'm right-handed at writing, but I shoot with my left hand. When I'm holding my um, shotgun. Right, that's the five inches there. Now what I want is, I'm going to measure it, because... Makes it a bit easier, really, doesn't it? Where am I going? Seven inches, am I? Put that over there. Put the leather work on the bench a bit more. Right, we have seven inches there. Look at that spot on that one is. And I can only go to this one here, which has got to come in just attach. As you notice, that one moved out, so. I will now check that. There we go, seven inches, seven inches, and I've got my five inches there, six inches in fact. So, without further ado, we'll take that off of there. <coughs> There we go, now I can put that piece away. Oh, I'm very low on black hide actually. Um, I've just done a dummy, uh, gun dog dummy waistcoat. Um, and as you know, I said before, I uh, buy it in half hides at a time, which is 125 to 130 pounds. Um, And there's not a lot left out of it, so um, it's only enough to make little dummies, um, puppy dummies, and the like, um, and a few other bits and pieces. So I'm just checking measurements here. I'm going to five inches now, and I that's what I'm doing. Take that out a little bit. It's surprising if you don't get these these items square. Like so you wonder why it don't fit. But what I found with grade leather, there we go. Now that should go on there like that, and it does. Just got to round these corners, but I could always do that later, go round with a knife. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm going to go round with it now. Put that back. But if you don't, if you don't get these square, when, you, when you're kind of putting it together, you wonder why it's a bit twisted or something. <coughs> Excuse me. So, that's what I do. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get hold of this here. Round 
round off these two corners and I tend to um, I tend to stick this grey leather to the back leather um, that way it doesn't move because when it's under the machine this this will move round here and stretch and uh, and whatever and then when it comes to you start it off right on the line at this end start on the line here times you get round there and come up round here you find it's gone up it's, it's actually you know instead of it, it coming level with that line instead of it coming level with that line where are we it's moved up then you've got to square this off to make to, to make it look good but then what happens is <coughs> the pouch is not square on itself like that where are we it's not square like that it's short, one of them's twisted so that's the other thing you've got to be careful of <coughs> because you being braid leather it allows that movement so what I'm just going to do is cut these little it's alright I'm just getting a light on the um, pen mark that I've just made so I tend to as I say I tend to um, glue them any more trimming to do I can do once it's glued that's now going to go on there like that I've got to move this back a bit I think it's too it's too close there we go because uh, I'm tending to work up there and I should be down here but then that's too far away isn't it not to worry I will get it sorted now next thing I want to do I believe <coughs> is shall I put a bit of tooling on there for him I ask myself um, and I think I will well I put a little pen mark here so I know where the top comes and I sew right that cover up when I dye it so it's not a problem there now what I'm going to do is, this is a, I'll put that in, I don't know, I might need that soon, yeah. Put the soldering iron in to burn off my excess oh, stitching. Oh, now this, it doesn't have to be this long. If you can get yourself a nice square bit, about a foot, that'd be more than adequate. But that is solid marble and it is inch and a quarter thick. Now again I still try to do it here because it's over the the foot of the um the leg of the what's the name the uh, table so I'm gonna bring this in closer and hope that you can see what I'm doing. Now, let's get some tooling out. And I think for this one I'm going to use... Where are we? I'm going to use those two. Yeah, and I'm going to use... This little baby here. Right. Now, you've got to remember which way you're using these tools each time. So I'm going to start, where's the, I'm going to start here, that's it. I'm going to start here, well, the reason I do it, it should be that way. Right, start number one. And this is a fairly hard 
leather. You got to go alternate. You got to alternate. I don't know if you can, you'll see it in a minute. I'll show it up and show you. Alternate between the two. I'm going to do a little gap so I can put something else in there actually that I've got in mind. I'm hitting it twice because it is a hard leather, but um, that's better. Concentration kicking in now. <laughs> I only do it on the top bit of the flap so that um, that's really where it needs to be. to match these up so that where's that one going it's starting from there oh a bit of a gap there but there you go now what I do is I'll just put this in here a little tap on this one because it's a it's a little star type thing. Uh, there you go. I think I think that's going to do him. Just a little bit like that. Let's uh, move it round so you can see it. Okay. Because I've got it focused quite close, it's hard to kick it in. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna put a hole or something. Oh, sorry, let's let's view it back out. Bad, that's bad. Right. So, put this lump of marble back, just put these back first, get a bit heavy, put that top. That's it right over there. Right, let's put them back. I don't like leaving my tools out, otherwise they're scattered all over the place and you spend more time looking for them because you don't know where you put them. The marble back. I swear I'm going to get that cut in half or something because it's it's far too wide for what I want really. Right, that's that done. Gush, it's done. That's done. My next stage would be that I'm now going to put this on there. The thing is, uh, do I put a pop popper on there, or do I put a bit of fancy moose um, antler on there uh, as a pocket? I'll think about that while I'm <coughs> doing this bit of polishing. So before I put stitch this all together, 
I'll, um, I'll do all this uh, dyeing first and um, I can still do that dyeing while the camera's on actually but I've got to go into the other shed where the linisher is to um, linisher it off so bear with me what I've got there medium brown that's it that's the one I want I use uh, feed bins this, this stuff uh, I get my stuff from the same leather supplier um, I've got one started here yeah, I'm sure I have where are we? yes there it is Um, I get a lot of my me, uh, me tools from there and um, also me, um, where are we, that's it, I'm looking for a bit of rag, uh, my hardware for my belts and my dog leads, all that sort of stuff. Um, that's, uh, that's where I get it from and uh, they're pretty quick, you know, all right, the um, postage comes a bit expensive, but I think they might have a minimum postage. Right, now what I'm going to do, are we in focus here, before we start going any further? Uh, let's bring that in so you can see. Now I'm just going to quickly whiz around here, like that. Right, and then what I do is I polish that off. Like that. There you go. Just fills that groove up and I'll polish it off otherwise you get that bluey tinge where you've put it on the face side of the leather or flesh side so it's called. So now I can just go around here like this just to dye it. Now I do I do polish, polish my edges, you can just dye them and leave them like that but I find when you've gone dyed it once, gone round, when you've gone fully round, like that, go round again and it stays, stays the same but because it soaks the first bit in, it goes quite, it stay, goes light but go round it twice and it stops that, so I'll show you what I mean. Well, I'm doing this and I should be doing that, what's the name, that stitch groove first. So without further ado, I'll, I'll do the stitch groove and it's done with then. That's it, quickly get the cloth and rub it off. You might see the sheen on here actually how it's done it it shows up a bit more here it looks like a, a tingy brown I don't know sort of color but I do keep rubbing it and it does lift it but then I'm not too bothered because once I've finished the job I uh, I go over it with um, polish leather polish or balm um, and it lifts that out so it's not too bad. Um, I can still see it's there. I don't know if you will, but have a look and see what you think. Too close, isn't it? There you go. If I turn it certain ways, you can see it along there. Look. See that little tinge there? It's, it's not much. Blind man would be glad to see it, but there you go. Um, that's that's how I do it. As I say, I'm not too perturbed because I take it off 
see that's only been dyed once see on the edge now what I do is just go around it again like that and it's done a couple of times that gives me that's time to really, um, water seeping in take there. it out the shed recipe, that is <laughs> but yeah, um, the shed I and, uh, cer certain items I polish it off. Dye, what you like do this. when you're polishing it off. And other items I dye and I put some together. some clear resilin on it. Right. Um, so, and that now, that resilin actually seals it. You can see. It seals the edge of the leather. Little shiny bits now. And um, it's it's so a clear. Well, it looks like milk. This one because um, and you just wipe it straight on. This one. You have to let it dry. Um, we well, can't the work on the leather. You see the shine. I have to turn it to uh, get it's the totally light dry. on it. So okay. I tend that to leave that to the last here. minute, which is usually when I've completed. I will resilin that. Finish the 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 item. Well, I'll probably do that as well. Right down the bottom. And then I'll do it. But I right, should do that I'll when I finish the job. And, um, just so, uh, and, uh, without further ado, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stitch <coughs> this um, belt loop on the back. And to do that, I'll just put a bit of glue on it like this. Or like that. It all depends. Okay. Because I need, I need to hold it steady. Because uh, it can move um, while stitching, so I tend to push that down there like that, and then lift it off. Let that dry a bit. It's a contact glue, but. It doesn't mean to say it, it, it glues as soon as you two surfaces touch together immediately. You've got to give it a, a drying out period. I'll use my um, air, hot air gun to help that. That's enough of that. Um, Then, <coughs> when I've got that on, I can um, I could even leave that until I've put the gusset on here, actually, if I wanted to, in which case I think I will. Bear with me a moment and I'll, um, I'll get this gusset on. Uh, let's square this end off, because it doesn't look square to me. There we go, that's that. Now there's going to be excess on here. Don't tell me why, I don't stretch it, don't ask why, but there always is. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put it on here, on the front pocket first. Whew. Then I'm going to go around and stitch it. I'm going to do it all in brown stitch, otherwise I've got to change the whole machine over a couple of times to do that if I go to black. So let's have a go, let's just stick this thing back on shall we. That's it. And then what I do is, um, I could take that one off. Oh, it's both come off. Not to worry. Stitch it too soon, I suppose. Okay, now what I do then. Stick that one on. Let's make it tacky again. Leave the other one. Now 
that's it. And I'll stitch that on there. Oh, you can't see for the gun, sorry. I'll stitch that on there. I'm only going across there. And I'm going to go one stitch over and then come back again. Um, just so you've got two stitches. But I've still got plenty of room for that. Look. So if you can see, I've still got plenty of room. Assuming that this piece of leather here is a two inch belt. It's two inches wide. So it will go through there. And what I do once I've stitched this piece. I then put this through. Then I stitch the bottom piece. That gives that just enough gap for the belt to go through. If I stitched it like that, what would happen is it would bend that way, it would bend that way because up like that when you put the belt in. So by taking up that little bit of room which which draws it together, gives it that distance there for your belt, it stop, prevents it from doing that. Right, so I can, I can stitch this one, but I always stick. I, I, I stitch this one, but I always stick to the rest of it when I turn it inside out. I stick, stick it to that, and then, then machine it. Right, so bear with me. You'll just hear the old machine going for a bit. You know, the old man at his sweatshop again. Man cave, or whatever you want to call it. So here we go. Let's, uh, let's do that. It's going to be hot today, apparently. And uh, I don't mind that. And according to uh, the weatherman, Saturday's going to be really nice as well. Is that a small stitch? Let's have a look. Thinking aloud here. Yes, that's fine. I don't like to have. I'm only talking because I don't want you to feel like you've been deserted. <laughs> I'm only having a, a small stitch because if you do a if you do a, a large stitch, um, what happens is when when you start stretching at it, it um it looks like you've got holes in it. corner that I rounded off. I'm stitching it face to face so that um, when I turn it inside out it, uh, you won't see the stitching as opposed to what I do on my um, dummy waistcoats I, uh, I do a back to back on those because um, it looks better than, uh, th th than it being face to face and then turning it inside out so and uh, people have commented on it that it's better that way can you do it the way you originally done it which was that way back to back um, so I've stuck at it and um, I've just, as I say, just sent one off. Where did I send that to? Um, I think it was Cornwall, somewhere down there. But um, It's nice when they uh, come back to you with a, um, with a comment like, you know, oh, I received it today, thanks very much, brilliant job, blah, blah, all that. You know, and uh, it's nice to get that feedback because um, a, a lot of them don't bother. There you go, horses for courses, isn't it? We don't all, we're not all, uh, oh, uh, in, in, in that, that, that way inclined. So let's turn this off. What I've now done, oh, bear with me. Starting to get a little bit too cramped in here. I'll burn this off. 
all soldering iron, that's, that's brilliant that is for doing that. I put that on earlier because I used to keep forgetting it. But uh, I don't know, when I come in here, if I'm going to be doing some work, I just, first thing I do is put that on. Turn the heater off in the morning. Um, have to have the heater on low because of the machine, etc. And it's not a cheap machine, so I don't want to get it ruined. Right, there we go, that's the gusset done on the back. Now all I have to do is turn it inside out, stretch the stitch into that, which I do. Soon you get a nice, where are we, nice tight stitch. See, right. rather than, if you, if you have a bigger sure. stitch, now stitch it, this um, you can see through no it. No problem at all. I'll so put that back in there before I stitch the other side. Um, that's that, that way done. we've got a little space there um, now what for the belt to, to go through without it straining. Yes, yes, um, it? Otherwise it's strain on a stitch, stitch all the time. On. You can put a little bit of uh, again. Oh, I can bring you back. It's up leather to you. dye on there that's because right, when you use you thick, la um, thick, thick leather and a thick needle it pushes the white bit through. But if it's brown all the way through where it's been dyed right through you won't have to do that so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the front piece um, onto the onto the um, the back I've already pre-glued it um, so you don't have to watch it dry <laughs> and so now I'm going to I'm going to put that one on there like that and I'm not stretching it at all I'm just laying it on there but I, I really I really should have marked the middle here um, it's exactly the right length but such law is when it comes to trying to get those corners right they don't necessarily come right So what I am to do is to guess that it's going to be right and to do that I've got to overlap it a bit because when you push it in there, when you push it in that point there, you've got to gradually push it in at different angles otherwise it'll pucker up. Um, put that one in there. Now I'm going to put this side in just in case I put too much on one side. Bring this, that's it. Pull this up so you can get it in there. And there you go. Okay. So I tend to push these in here. I put a little extra glue on these corners so you come deeper in that way. Um, where are we here? Just making sure it's in camera shot. Um, just so that the machine's going to go in there all right. So if there's any excess on this side, it's not a problem. You just go down to your roller blade and you trim that off. But be careful not to take your die off the edge. <laughs> That's what you've got to watch. But um, at the end of the day, a blind man will be glad to see it half the time. Right, so I'm just going to stitch this up. Um, and then we decide what we're going to do. With the flat, do is I'm going to put a plus on sure here yet. because if I put, uh, I think I might just use a draw cord or something because um, that's going to press stud will press stud will just pull off because of the 
I've got Six inch leather, right. it'll just oh, ping up and undo the press stud. So I don't think I'm going to go down that route. Don't want to come so, off. Um, but it did. <laughs> I'm just going to stitch this up. This is how I usually do and, them, uh, like this. this. From there. With this leather on here, going up through there. But like a fool, I forgot to put that piece of leather on the front down there. So I'm going to have to stud it, I'm afraid. Um, but it will still be just as good. I've made this leather soft. It looks a bit funny like that. But at least you can get more in that way. So I used them um, hide on the front. Um, it, it even limits you more on, on your gusset and everything else. And as to what amount you can get in there. So what I'm doing is I'm going with... Uh, a stud. Now, to do that, I've got to move the camera because my punches are in there, what the camera stood on. So, bear with me a minute while I wiggle it around. And which one is it? Let's have a look. Number four, that's what it is, it's that one there. Okay, I've got all the rest of the gear in that one. There we go, so it's it's number four. Um, let's put the camera back, I don't know if it, it might be a bit lower now. Let's uh, put it up to where it was. this hole. Right, so I'm going to have to put it there because it's over the table leg. That's that done. Now I've got to just bend it over. Yes, that's got it. Marked it. But I still want to get it in the middle. <laughs> that's just me, that is. I, I've got to have things in the middle. That's that one. That's that one. What's the width of it? Four and a half. It'll be two and a quarter. I didn't think it was in the middle. There we go. Two, four and a half, four and a half is two, two and a quarter. There we go. That's where it's going to go there. And the way to do that is put that in there. Like so. Over the f number four again. that done. I don't need that now, I? Put that there. <sighs> Keep forgetting it. Got to come down here with it, and I? Right, now, I want some studs. Dig these out. There's one. Oh. And where's the little ones here? So that's it, that's that on there and that on there, and I want the that one on there, where is it? Oh click that off. The other one, I need two of them. There we go. Mm. 
Right, so I'm going to put that on there. With this, I hope you can see. That's it, let's put that on there. That's going to go on there. Get me a special little tool that crimps them over. Yes, okay. Still like to have it on metal though. one through there but I found when I'm using butt leather I have to take some of these what's the name down Sorry, that's just me being picky. Bear with me. Oh, pardon me. I have to do I have to get this. And I have to get this. This sounds a bit evil and over the top. But the only way I can do it. Oh, it's a sloppy me beer. is uh, to thinning this leather a bit just so I've got enough of this I'll show you just so I've got enough of that uh, coming through and it's only got to be dear a little bit because it's got a it's only a little thin piece of metal that's going through. So to do that, what I do is I ream this out a bit actually. And it doesn't matter because it's got this is going to be covered by um the pop the popper. So Still not enough, so I've got to go some more yet. So I do have plan A, B, and C. That's A, that's B, and this is C. But you've still got, I'm not even halfway through that leather yet, so you've still got plenty there, it's not, and it's not going to weaken it. Just 
just enough to fold that first piece over. And they don't do these, the posts, they don't do the posts on these any longer. So, you know, you, you're stuck with it. Right, that's that one. Let's go on to a wider. good doing it on the flesh side because this is all flat so you're not going to get to it anyway so I'm gonna I'm gonna be brave and give that a try um here it is where's my tool there it is I have forgot to put the cup in there, but that doesn't matter because it gives me that advantage to get that on there, which is great. That's it, it's got it. Well, look at that. Let's hope it snaps together. I hope we see, I hope so. It's got that until it stretches out properly. Put that back. That over there. That can go back down there. That go with it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of rag in here like I normally do. Stuff it out to help give it its shape. Finish inch and a half gusset, belt loop on the back, and uh, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt, uh, and this is all for uh, Curtis, Newfoundland, I think he comes from, and um, on good minds to put a um, Canadian stamp on there. I think I will actually. So, um, without further ado, I'll bid you cheerio.